Now let's, for this lecture, move a little more formally and, and what I'd like to do is give you still very superficially a sense of the kinds of different analyses that we will do. And we already know that we have, we can look at spatial data as events or as surfaces or as discrete objects. And now we'll push that a little further, first make it formal, and then see what types of statistical analyses we can do, what kind of sample concept we use, what kind of models we use, and what kind of research questions we ask. The fundamental notion that we use is that of a spatial process, and specifically the notion of a spatial random field. And what is a random field? It's, if you wish, a figment of our imagination. It doesn't really exist. It's a model. It's a simplification of reality. It's a mathematical model by which we try to define or capture the variability of data over space. So we're looking at these points that represent locations of burglaries. How can we represent that mathematically? We need to come up with some kind of model that tells us what is the probability that a burglary happens in this location? Or given that we have a burglary in this location, what is the probability that another one happened within half a mile of this location? And those become fundamental mathematical models that then let us simplify the whole thing as this. this. These little brackets here stand for a set. So this is a collection of z's at s. z is any random variable which could stand for burglaries or income or house price or temperature or pressure, anything you can think of. s is a location in a precise sense. Either in terms of coordinates or in terms of spatial objects that are registered in space, like our counties. As long as we know in the GIS where they are, then we can work with them. S is an element of this set D, which is called the index set. And you can think of the index set as being the collection of all possible locations. And so formally, you know, we have this S as an element of a multi-dimensional space, we won't go beyond two, but in principle it could be three-dimensional. In geology, a lot of applications are three-dimensional, same in atmospheric science. Um, if you bring in time, then space-time is three-dimensional, so it, it's not difficult to come up with three dimensions. The index set, let's talk about the, in well, let's first think about the location. We just talked about this. Are the locations given or are they part of the experimental design? In both cases, they end up being treated as fixed. You know, if you have your monitoring stations, they don't move around. Once they're there, they're there. As opposed to the addresses of the burglaries, they are random locations. They could happen or they could not happen. So S could be fixed or could be random itself. Now let's look at D. D is the possible locations. If we deal with a surface, D is anything. It's infinitely large. It's every possible location on the infinitely smooth and large surface. But if D is counties, then it's not. Uh, the concept of spatially random is that there is no relation between the points. A random process or a random field is a mathematical model to uh, formally express the chances that things happen in particular locations. Okay. So the spatial randomness that we had in the map is a specific case of a spatial, re spatial distribution. And we'll see, for example, in point pattern analysis, we'll call this complete spatial randomness and it will be modeled by a Poisson model. And these 
completely random processes will be called Poisson point processes. And the Poisson model is an equation that tells you what is the probability that we get two points within a distance of x from each other. That's the mathematical model. In spatial autocorrelation, we'll have equations that tell us what is the probability that we observe a given income provided that the income of the neighbors take on certain values. And we'll express that mathematically. So that's the sense in which to understand this kind of randomness. They're all the same terms, but they're used in, in different contexts. So this is really a mathematical model. And each of these distinctions that I've been making is S fixed or is S random is the infinite or collection of countable discrete objects will get us into a different kind of analysis, a different kind of assumptions. And let's um, look at them again very quickly just to refresh your memory. We saw the three types of data, the points, the surfaces, and the discrete objects. Now we can look at three types of analyses. Point pattern analysis, which is really about events. Events are things that happen. Now, we'll talk about them as points, but they don't have to be points. They can also be, they can have an aerial connotation, but it gets more complicated that way. Uh, some recent applications of this in, are in, of all things, medical imaging. So when they take CAT scans and stuff like that of your brain or of your body to identify tumors. Um, of course, you can, as a doctor, sit in front of the screen and try to figure out where the tumor is, but it would be much more efficient if a system can automatically identify these things. So then you can process and batch huge amounts of information, which what these CAT scans are are basically huge amounts of spatial information. Um, in 3D sometimes or in 2D. So there the, you might be interested in points, but you might also be interested in like tumorous growths, which are areas and identifying whether these are different from their neighbors, whether cells are different from their neighbors, those kinds of things are some applications of, of point. I mean, we refer to it as point pattern analysis, but it's really the analysis of events. Uh, our surfaces will give us geostatistical modeling. and and here the problem will be, and I'll repeat this a couple of times so it really sinks in, uh, we have a number of sample points and we try to come up with a surface. And obviously the more sample points we have, the easier it's going to be to figure out what the surface is. And then the third type of analysis has this really awkward term, lattice data analysis, and that's really more, not so much interested in the location, but interested in the values. What is the spatial distribution of incomes? What is the spatial distribution of house prices? That's really what is the object of interest here. 